Okay, Serial 1.2.0 Beta 1 has just been released a few days ago and I wanted to throw together a video that just goes over some of the user interface changes that I've noticed. I'm not going into any of the new functionality. This is kind of like we're opening up the box and looking at the shiny new toy and just admiring it right now, seeing what's changed, what's been moved around, just to help you get acclimated to the software before we start diving into some of the new functionality. All the videos I've made previous to this release are all based on version 1.0.6, so if that's what you're running, and you want to stick there, that's fine. Kind of recommend it if you're still a beginner. That way the things that have changed in this version won't affect any of those videos that I've created in the past. But if you did install it or you're just curious on what's going on, start with this video. I'll make some future videos on the new functionality as we move forward. But again, we're just looking at the shiny new toy right now. So my name is Rich and you're watching Deep Space Astro. Okay, so what I have set up here to show you guys kind of a side-by-side, -side. this window right here is 0.1.0.6. I'm actually uh, RDP'd over into another laptop that's running the, the current stable version. And then my main PC that we're sitting on right now is the new beta version, 1.2.0. So we can jump back and forth and see the differences and everything. The first thing that I wanted to point out before we start looking at the actual interface is... Uh, if you use if you use the scripts, the OCS preprocessing script, it used to be, and we'll come over here and look at the older version. That when you ran that script, the folder structure created it created a process directory that had all of our fits files and our sequences, everything that the script put together for us. And when it was finished stacking, it left us with the result.fit file. If we jump over to the new version things have changed in the back end. We still have our process directory, but now we also have a masters directory, which will hold our stack bias, our stack dark, and our stack flat. So our master files are pulled out of the process and put into our masters folder, similar to Pixinsight, easier to find that way, right? Kind of appreciate they did that. Uh, as far as the result.fit file, when it gets done stacking it, this is what it's gonna look like from now on. It will no longer be named just result. It'll be result underscore and the total number of seconds of acquisition time of your light frames. All right, so that's the first thing. Let's open up that fit file. We're currently sitting on the new version right here and we'll jump over to 1.0.6 and do the same. We'll open up the fit file over here. Okay, so they took a button out of the toolbar. We used to be able to come down here and open and close our histogram toolbox just by clicking this button. And if we jump back over to the beta version, that button has been removed. But the function is still there. You just need to come up to image processing and histogram transformation. So it hasn't gone anywhere. They just removed that button. Back over to 1.0.6. And we'll take a look at our view modes, right? We're currently in linear, and here are the options we're used to seeing. We have a couple new options around the auto stretch if we jump back over to the beta version. We'll come down to linear and put ourselves in the auto stretch as usual, and we've got all that green going on because of the extra green pixel in the images. And usually, this would not go away until we would do a background extraction on it. Now we can come down here and the auto stretch is currently linked or chained as they call it. If we click the button, it'll unchain it, unlink it. So you have to imagine you have three color channels in your image. You have red, green, and blue. When it's chained or linked, all three channels are auto stretched at the same amount. When it's unlinked or unchained, those channels are stretched individually of each other. It determines what the best stretch would be for it. So it gives us a better view. It takes all that green out for us. So we also have a high definition that will take us from a 16 bit LUT to a 20 bit LUT, which is just color tables basically. I would just leave it unchecked for now unless there's a specific use case that you know you need it for. Okay, so let's again, jump back over to 1.0.6. And in all of my videos, I've always told everybody, you can't do anything on the RGB tab. Because you click on it, it tells you it's only for visualization. So you can't crop, you can't lay samples down for background extraction. But in the beta version, we're on the RGB tab. I can crop, 
I can actually work on the RGB tab if I want to, if I was doing a background extraction and I wanted to lay down some samples, I can lay my samples down. I can do everything on the RGB tab if I want to. So that's pretty cool. All right. Back over to the older version again. And, you know, the process, the videos that I've shown that I've put together for everybody. You know, we do our stretching and I'll just jump through this real quick just to get something to look at here. Give it a quick stretch. And pretend like we're done with this. This is good. And in the tutorials, I always said right click on the image and you can save in any of these file formats that you want. Well, they took that away because they allow us to work on the RGB tab now. So on the new version, when you right click, that menu is not there. It's the same menu that we always see when we're on any of the color channels. So when you get to the point you want to save your image, you have to come up here and you may think it's the save button, but it's not. The save button will save the current image that you're viewing. If you want to save it out as another format, you need to hit the button right next to it. It says supported image files. Now I can either just type, for example, result.jpg or result.tiff. If you want to list and see everything that you can export them out as, just click the menu down here. It shows you all the different file types that you can save as. So you can either select the specific one that you want or just leave it on supported image and type the name that you want so like a tiff hit save and figure your settings for it and then hit save okay next up is again we'll go over here on the older version uh when we're doing the cropping right so we had to be over on one of our color channels and just draw a box around there and then we right click and we'd hit crop there's some new stuff going on in the new version now. Again, you can do this on the RGB channel if you, if you want. We'll draw our selection. We'll right click. Our crop's still there, but there's also a rotate and crop. So if you wanted to rotate and crop all in one fell swoop, you can do that here. So here's your angle here. If I wanted to flip this around 180 degrees, that gives you a little visual as you're dragging this around so you can see which way you're going to end up and just hit apply and it'll crop it and rotate it for you so i think as far as the user interface is concerned and like i said the folder structure and how they name the result file after the stack i think that's all that's changed from a visual perspective at least the stuff that i pointed out in my previous tutorials for you guys there are a lot of other functions that they've included in this release we we have noise reduction now we have uh, starnet plus plus has been fully integrated into it there's live stacking. Um, not going to go into that in this video. I will be making separate videos for each of these larger new functions that they put into this. Um, but again, just wanted to go over the things that I saw that were new in, in the, the latest version. Hope that helps. I know some of you have been asking for a new tutorial for beginners using this version. I kind of want to wait to do a full-blown tutorial like that until we we get through this beta stage uh, but i don't know we'll see how it goes if you found this helpful you know give it a like if you have any questions or comments as always leave them below and i will do my best to answer you thanks for everybody's time and we'll see you on the next one clear skies